In the initial scene, we are acquainted with a man named Aaron who is remaining on the housetop of a structure with a cigarette in his grasp. He seems, by all accounts, to be very baffled and anxious. He attempts to contact his better half, however gets no reaction from her. It just so happens, she is now dead in her loft. After that, Aaron leaves a voicemail expressing his anger. He more than once says we might have done it together not long after he gets overpowered by his nervousness and commits the unbelievable. Obviously, they didn't do it together. In the following scene, we meet Carrie on with a young lady living with her sweetheart trimming. She is currently having a conversation with her mother, who is pleading with her to return home as soon as possible. In the wake of hanging up the call, Liv beginnings pressing her assets and is very nearly leaving. A couple of seconds after the fact, Hamming awakens and asks about the matter. Liv claims that she is fed up with him because he is always working. Trimming attempts to console her, yet their discussion takes. Dim turn when he uncovers that one of his clients committed the unimaginable on the grounds that he took a work break to invest energy with her. Incidentally, he's discussing Aaron, feeling that Hamming focuses on work over their relationship. Live feels unsettled and stomps off. We likewise discover that a secretive infection is influencing individuals around the world, prompting serious mental aggravations and flimsiness. A few specialists guarantee that the infection instigates a peculiarity known as development, basically making people relapse. It implies individuals are ultimately turning around into crude conditions of humanity. As indicated by a teacher, the human species are losing their frontoparietal curves, developed, liable for cooperative and logical way of behaving. Because of this, human feelings are being impacted and the side effects are uplifted. Crabbiness, speedy attitude animosity, yelling slurs and fortnight entryways, etc. To offer help to such individuals, the public authority has made a web-based stage called the Buddy Framework, recruited through the companion system to handle customers, of which Hamming is one. He as of now feels exceptionally regretful over Aaron's disastrous destruction as he was liable for dealing with them. What makes this much more awful for fixing is the way that Aaron was his most memorable client. Hamming ought to likely be terminated to see then, at that point, movements to 100 days earlier where we see Stitching conversing with Aaron through Aaron's voice. He clearly expresses frustration, but Hamming manages to convince him to take his medication on time and relax. Soon after the meeting, Hamming is booked to lead another with a client named Kane Sardo. When the meeting starts, Kane begins to vent his disappointment, admitting that he discarded his prescriptions. He even concedes that he killed somebody in the road who was hindering his direction. Furthermore, Kane passes a few mean comments towards him and lets him know that his treatment meetings aren't helping him by any stretch of the imagination. Notwithstanding, Hamming attempts to comfort him, yet the client will not tune in and leave the meeting suddenly. Probably to kill once more. Hamming ought to be fired without a doubt. A couple of days passed by and Kane's psychological state keeps on crumbling on a specific day while amidst a shower, he gets a visit from his companion named Ian. Kane at first tends to him in a forceful way, however his conduct movements to charm after discovering that Ian is carried with them. A few opiates burning through no time can consumes these medications, which gives him a feeling of flashing fulfillment. However, to their horror, they are interrupted by a doorknock. Popo, come. It's the police in a condition of frenzy. The two companions figured out how to sidestep the specialists not long before the police break in. Later on, Kane accepts that Hamming is the one liable for alarming the specialists. Notwithstanding, he doesn't know anything about Hamming because of which he can't find him. 80 days prior, from the current day, Liv became one of Hamming's clients through the friend framework. After some time, their restorative meetings ultimately transformed into a nearby obligation of fellowship. At some point, the two chose to meet in, which was contrary to the principles of the buddy framework. Along these lines, their association bloomed into a heartfelt connection. Their love, on the other hand, has begun to deteriorate, as evidenced by their ongoing arguments when she returns to her home. Yet, she can't open the entryway with her unique finger impression. After a few bombed endeavors, she falls back on her mark and ultimately gets entrance. After entering, she is invited by her mom and her new beau. Afterward, while having some food lives, mother shares her aim to sell the house. She currently needs to migrate to a superior spot with her accomplice. Live strongly opposes this choice because the homes and her cherished memories of her biological father are at stake. 
Consequently, she won't sign any archives. However, unbeknownst to experience her prior signature on the entry entryway permits them to continue without her assent. When Liv becomes acquainted with of this, she lashes out that she gets a fork and wounds her mother's sweetheart. Applications are rarely cool. She is simply gaining an advantage. Then again, Hammond proceeds with his endeavor to call live, however he can't contact her. Concerned, he contacts the police to journalist is missing just to discover that they can start the examination solely after five days from the second the individual disappeared left with no other decision, Hamming assumes control over issues. He ventures in that direction and uses the companion system identification number to locate her. Sadly, his membership accounts have expired as a result of his prolonged absence from taxi services. Hemming has no choice but to continue his journey because, God, this view of the futures is terrifying me. He approaches a random individual and asks for a ride to the subway station, assuming that the individual is a criminal. The person threatens to use his firearm on him, provoking him to withdraw carelessly. Following a few hours of strolling, Soing shows up at the metro station where he coincidentally finds a harmed man lying on the ground, Concerned he moves toward the fellow and continues to call 911 for clinical. Notwithstanding, Fixing is out of the blue gone after by an obscure attacker from behind, taking him out. A brief time later, he recovers his cognizance just to find that the harmed man is taken. The entirety of his assets, including his knapsack, recognizable proof cards and, surprisingly, his shoes. In spite of this misfortune, Hamming figures out how to financially recover and sheets a metro train to proceed with his excursion. In the following scene, we see Kane venting his hostility by pummeling an individual. Unintentionally, the individual is a similar person who looted Hamming Canadian review Hamming's rucksack and go over his distinguishing proof card. Kane promptly remembers him and becomes excited at having tracked down his objective. They additionally access Hamming's gadget and figure out where he is going to right away. The team hurries to the metro station, yet they barely miss the withdrawing train by a couple of moments. This goads stick, so he berates in faulting him for being excessively delayed after discovering that the following train will not show up for an additional 25 minutes. They come up with a different strategy. They take a vehicle from a lady and dash away coming. Ian questions whether he is certain that sewing was the person who alarmed the police. In response, Kane asserts that either Hamming or Ian himself must be the culprit. In the meantime, Fixing nods off on the train and dreams of himself being abandoned in a forlorn scene as he moves toward a strange element in the land. He suddenly snaps out from the fantasy subsequent to getting off the train, Stitching resumes the remainder of his process by walking. He makes a few endeavors to bum a ride, yet without any result. While strolling along the roadway, he runs over a gathering of nearby hoodlums ransacking a blameless lady. Nonetheless, this time Sledge decides not to engage in it, so he quickly gets away from the scene. Then again, Kane and Ian find a little kid situated in the secondary lounge of the vehicle. She is, in fact, the daughter of the same person whose vehicle they have taken. This oddities emerged, yet Ian figures out how to keep calm and starts conversing with the youngster. However, they introduced themselves. Kane demands that Ian shouldn't uncover their actual personalities. At the point when the last option deviates, they get into a warmed contention and wind up crashing the vehicle. Might it be said that you are messing with me? Luckily, every one of them make do with minor wounds. Kane hauls himself out of the accident vehicle, yet in pauses for a minute to stifle the young lady to death. All right causing it to show up as an incidental demise following this pushing act, both of them proceed with their process by walking. Somewhere else, Fixing at long last arrives at his objective and thumps on one of the house entryways inside the local area. An old woman answers the entryway and Hamming asks about Live's home. Accordingly, the old woman guides him towards the house close to the forest. Later on, this old lady recovers a few food from the kitchen and goes into a room where she has tied up a little kid in chains. She tosses the food to the hostage young lady, Gretel, who eats up it. The little kid acts abnormally, apparently in light of the fact that she is likewise impacted by the secretive infection. A brief time frame later, Hammond shows up at Live's home and tracks down the entryway. Open. He strolls into the house just to observe the inert body of Live's mom and her sweetheart lying on the floor. He collapses on the ground in this subconscious state because he is terrified and feels uneasy. 
he encounters a terrible vision where Live is hard-heartedly taking care of upon his tissue. The next morning, Fixing awakens, defeat by shudders. He grabs some food from the refrigerator and eats it, giving the impression that he has been starving for days. His way of behaving shows that the infection is gradually beating him also. In the midst of this, he hears somebody going into the house and thus, he rapidly conceals himself behind a lounge chair. It turned out to be Kane and Ian, who were looking for Hamming Kane when the intruders showed up. Continues to look through the whole house while Ian starts to play with a rope in the pool. Inevitably, Kane step by step moves toward the love seat, however Ham in some way or another figures out how to slither away and conceal underneath the kitchen sink. Not long after, Kane strolls into the kitchen, however he can't handle the spoiled smell from the dead. Him to leave in the following scene. Stitching leaves and adventures towards the forest looking for live. Inevitably, he at last finds her, however she is now tainted by the infection. Live is acting in a base way and benefiting from crude tissue. Hamming gradually moves toward her and figures out how to alleviate her fomented state. He says he'll simply change his name to Sledge and they can be savages together. He then, at that point, takes out his coat and covers her body with it. He also recalls the happy times they shared in the past in the midst of this. Soon after, Kane and Ian spot the couple and immediately begin their assault. Kane pursues Hamming, though Ian utilizes the rope to drag Live by her neck. During the disturbance, Hamming gets a stone and strikes it hard on Kane's head. He then, at that point, positions himself above Stick and conveys a progression of powerful blows, at last killing him. Following this, Hammond rapidly races to Live's salvage. Seeing him, Ian makes the getaway. Yet, at that point, Live is as of now not alive. This appalling misfortune breaks sewing, provoking him to separate in tears with extraordinary distress. He carries her alive to a wide field, where he lies next to her. He holds her hand and ultimately dies. As the time slips by, the remaining parts of the couple steadily decays, changing into skeletal remaining parts.